This gentleman is Scott Jones, small businessman and Republican candidate for governor in the primary for 2012. Thank you, sir, for being on the show. Yes, sir. Thank you. Well, some high profile candidates are out there and you admit you're coming in out of nowhere as a different kind of candidate. Who are you? What's your background and why are you running for governor? Well, after uh, fighting cancer for three years and three separate times, I uh, got the opportunity to watch a lot of public television and Fox News and CNN and spent a lot of time learning about politics and realizing that I'm just an average person and I, a lot, the average person is looking for something different right now. What's the difference in having an average Joe or person in the governor's mansion versus having someone with experience in handling the diplomacy and, and, and all the pomp and circumstance of professional politics? We've had enough, and I can relate to the average citizen. Doing without right now is a big key for me and my family and my employees, and that's, that's something that I can relate to the average citizen about that most politicians, that they've lost that focus. They get into politics and they lose the focus. And a lot of them have come from political backgrounds or higher education and they don't relate quite to the person that makes the biscuits in the morning or the, the person that makes the donuts or the person that's working on your car every day. Those are the folks that I can relate to. Those are the folks that I see every day. Um, when you get into the governor's mansion, if that happens for you, how do you address your legislative colleagues? Because you have a House, you have a Senate. Now, granted, they are Republican-led and could be in 2013, but you just pretty much said they're professional politicians and you're the average guy. How do you, how do you, how do you round that corner with them? Well, first thing we got to do is we got to get those folks back into the public. We've got to get those politicians back out on the streets, and they need a leader that's going to tell them, look, enough is enough, enough with the parties. Let's focus on the people. Let's focus on jobs instead of creating laws that the average citizen can't even relate to, don't even know anything about. We need to start looking at how we can help create jobs in North Carolina. We got to look after North Carolina first. If you, if you tell me parties don't matter, then I'll ask you, why did you choose Republican versus the Democratic Party to run in? Well, it was kind of like flipping a coin. You could choose one or the other. Uh, I would have chosen to run as an independent, but the state has basically, the parties have ensured that that will not happen. You would have to be full time out of work in order to be able to get enough signatures to run as an independent or unaffiliated candidate in North Carolina. You got a Facebook page, it's uh, Scott Jones for Governor, and it's easy, easy to find. You post on it a bit here and there, and about every other post I see is cut this, cut that, cut this, control that and you want some tax reform. Exactly. They go hand in hand, but they are two separate issues. Which will come first? Cut state spending or reform the tax code? We're gonna cut more state spending than anybody's ever seen in North Carolina as governor. You well, can't cut taxes, you can't do tax reform without cutting spending and cutting programs. Okay, you, I'm hoping you've looked at it because I'm gonna ask you, go into that budget, go into the state government and do some cutting for us here, if only just in philosophy. North Carolina Department of Motor Vehicles. Fraud done been caught right there in Greensboro. You got the weight of the people that they have working in those offices. If you ever tried to call Division of Motor Vehicles during the day and get someone, it's literally impossible. It's a burden on the state. Same as the, the emissions test and the state and safety inspections. They've already tried it. Well, they need a governor that's going to push it through. That's one area that we can cut. Now, there are going to be some pains and there are going to be some job losses when you cut programs and, and also cut out parts of the uh, budget. Of course, you got to do away with some things. Well, DOT is another organization which we work with greatly and have for for the last eight or nine years. But I see wasted spending every day with the materials and services that are they're getting provided. And we need to cut those things out of the budget. We need to look at the basics, look at the conditions of the roads. We need to focus on the fund of just the basic things like road repair, not building new roads. Right now we're spending money on things and new things that we can't even maintain. Those are the areas that we need to cut out of the budget. Would you be willing to give a state agency a chance at finding or, or, or hiring people who will focus on efficiency before you say you've wasted it and I'm going to cut you therefore? Because if you cut, it doesn't necessarily mean they'll be any more efficient with what they have left. 
we will definitely have to look into uh, what those departments are doing for sure. But I know that money is getting transferred within from department to department. When the one falls short, they'll pull money from another area to cover it. But we need to look at essential programs first. The essentials, if we need repair roads, we need to repair roads, not put out mulch, not put in plant material, not build new roads that we can't maintain in the future. We need to look at maintaining what we have currently. And yes, if we need to go in there and cut programs immediately, I'm sure there's plenty of programs that can be cut away right now. As governor, a, you will propose a budget, but the budget that gets presented to you will, will not be your budget. You can either sign it or veto it. So you, you're going to have to influence these lawmakers. And how will you do that when there's so many, quote, essential items of spending where mulch, for instance, which is yep. your business, that's very important to you to have that state contract versus the asphalt guy versus the, the man who throws the, 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 the flower seeds out on the right. road. So you've got some work to do here. How do you, how do you, how do you bring that together in good faith and make it happen? Um, first and foremost, we need to bring our legislators back full time. This part time, running law firms part time and being a politician part time, it needs to stop. We need full time politicians in here right now because we've got an, a real dire urgency. This economy is crashing right from underneath us. Fuel costs are going up. They're, they're just too high. You can't even afford to get gas to go to work if you're even fortunate enough to have a job. We've got to get the politicians back in there full time and make hard choices, hard decisions. And we have to have a governor that can get in there on the floor and say, look, enough is enough, folks. We need to focus on the economy and we need to focus on the people and jobs mm -hmm. first. Let's set everything aside and let's start focusing on creating new jobs and strengthening the economy in North Carolina. You're in the Republican primary where the mantra has been the last several years, less government is better, but bringing back lawmakers for a full-time schedule doesn't seem to fit with that philosophy, but you seem to think it would fit with that philosophy. So how do you get better, less, uh, less inefficient government by adding more of it at the top level? Well, you have so many departments within North Carolina government. You've got 20 departments or so, hypothetically, under Department of Motor Vehicles or Department of Transportation. But they need some guidance, they need some oversight, and they need people that are elected by the people to oversee those programs. You can't do it at a part-time level. It's got to be full-time, all or none. You need to have somebody that can watch these areas to know what's going on in them. Not just say, oh, well, here's a budget, here's the money, have fun, we'll be back in a few months. They've got to have oversight. Uh we, you touched on license plate fees, vehicle registration, safety emissions, and safety inspections for the state. Now, of course, you've registered your opposition to the inefficiency of the DMV, mm -hmm. but this is a different issue involved with that. You have to deal with DMV to work through these things, but what's, what placed this on your radar, that renewing your tag every year is a bad idea? Um, we operate a multitude of vehicles, uh, fleet vehicles, and like I said, down to earth and with the average citizen being on Facebook the mm -hmm. way I am, going to the meetings, the small meetings, the grassroots groups, and listening to them and talking to them, I want to see the lines decrease at the Division of Motor Vehicles. Make it easier on the folks and stop taxing them so much. You buy a car, it's never yours because you're always taking and paying taxes on it and they can come take that car. That's not right. That's your car. You paid for it and you've invested in it. Same as the mm -hmm. unemployment lines right now. Have you ever went by an unemployment office recently in the mornings? They're Thankfully literally not. No. Lined no. out the door. And I'm planning to make an effort to go to these offices and visit with those folks that are standing out there in those lines because those are the folks that are having to struggle to keep their power on and to make ends meet. They're the ones that want a better government than what they have right now, and in a lot of cases, a lesser government. A lot of those people in that line who are politically interested, such as yourself, would look at you as governor and say, all right, you've, you're talking a big game while I'm standing in this line. Mm. What are you going to do to put me to work by creating the environment in North Carolina? What's your plan? Well, right now, we need to start looking at where the jobs have gone. The jobs are overseas. What are we going to do to create jobs? Agriculture in North Carolina is one of our biggest industries. 
and we're losing it every single day. Agenda 21 is taking property rights away. We need to stop Agenda 21. We need to start protecting land, helping farmers to expand. Look at hiring these folks that are out here, even if they're part-time. You've got people that are on, on the unemployment. Yes, they're receiving benefits, but it's a fraction of what they typically receive. They should be allowed to offset that income that they're receiving to try to match what they were making before. Now, currently, they cannot do that. They need to be able to make an extra income while they're receiving unemployment benefits, which would hopefully lead into a full-time job as the economy grows. How do you keep that in check, though, because either you're unemployed or you're not, and people would look at the guy working as double dipping on a check there. So how do you stay out of political trouble with that with your own constituents? Well, that's true. And, and that's where honesty is going to have to be uh, given. When they go into the unemployment office and they're filling out that information, they're going to have to be sure that they correctly fill everything out and that they're documented and well known. And those employers that are hiring these folks should be easily able to be contacted in order to let the, the Office of Unemployment know what they're doing and what they're making and at some point look at a full-time job or full-time placement in that company. Okay, illegal immigration then has to pop on the radar if you want people working in the agricultural sector. Farmers will tell you North Carolinians don't want to work in the fields anymore. It's a bygone era and you're saying there's jobs there for North Carolinians, but there are people who come here to work those jobs. How do you handle that? Oh, that's a good one. That's a good question. The problem with the immigration Hispanics are here, they're going to be here, they're not going anywhere. It, it's part of society now. It's just the same as any other immigrant that has come from any other country. They are part of our society now. Now we need to learn how to work with them and how to adjust and, and help each other. Um, and, and it is true that the illegal immigrants, and there are, there, there's a lot of misconception. Not all are illegal. Some have been here for years and years and years that should be classified as legal as long as they can show the length of time they've been here. And as long as they're actually supporting society, they're buying goods, they're paying taxes. Everybody pays taxes every day when they go purchase goods. Would go as governor, would you have the sheriffs and encourage them to round people up and send them back to their home countries? Absolutely not. I would encourage them to document them and help assist them in getting the proper documentation that they need. Most immigrants come to the United States and have no idea, especially if they come into the United States illegally, they don't know how to get proper documentation. They're scared. You think they're gonna flat out come up and knock on the sh door of the sheriff's office and say, oh, by the way, I snuck across the fence and I need some assistance. They know the first thing they're going to do is be thrown in handcuffs, dragged into the basement of the cell, and then wait for deportation. They're not going to come out. Do you think these migrant workers are here because there are jobs here Americans, North Carolinians will not do? Absolutely. I deal with it daily. I don't have any immigrants working for me, but in our industry, in the agriculture industry, is divided into several things. Lawn care, the guys that are out mowing, to the guys that are doing irrigation, to the guys that are doing plants inside of doctor offices and hospitals. It's, it's, uh, there, there are people everywhere. And, you know, in this industry, the, the Hispanic crowd, they'll do whatever they have to do in order to, to make an income. Now, as governor, you could either come out in favor or against corporate incentives where you get some tax breaks, but hundreds of jobs could come in. What do you think about that? Absolutely not. Nobody's mm -hmm. given me incentive one, and I've been in this, in this state all my life. I was born and raised here. Uh, I've come from a family that's on their own business and I've started my own business and I've fought and struggled to try to keep my business as it is today. And it, it's difficult. But no, I don't believe in incentives. I believe in deregulation of a lot of agencies will help and eliminating the income tax. We have got to eliminate the income tax. On who? Persons or corporations or businesses? Both. So what do you do? How do you... Are you going to replace that revenue, or are you just going to let the state downsize? The state needs, the, the government needs to downsize so that businesses can grow and people will have the money to go out and, and eat and to spend money and to buy flowers and, and other products that are made in North Carolina.
cover the biggies here, though, but asphalt on the roads, conservatives like asphalt on the roads, and they don't like potholes. Conservatives mm -hmm. like schools. They may like charter schools better, but they want the charter school or the public school taken care of in their neighborhood. What do you say to them if you eliminate basically all forms of taxation and you haven't told me how you replace the revenue? We need to replace the revenue with a better tax system such as own sales tax. I'm an advocate for the fair tax. I don't agree with everything that is in the fair tax. I, I don't believe that it'll ever get passed through the federal level. It's going to have to be passed on a state level. Each state's going to have to create their own fair tax, and then the government's going to have to come in after that and look and say, hmm, you know, this is something, this is a program that's working for that state. Now, how can we encourage the states to join us as a federal government to create a national fair, uh, sales tax? There are more people buying every day. Me, you, everyone buys something every day, and they pay a tax. If we paid slightly more in tax, then we would be able to fund a lot more programs than we will with the income taxes. This is Scott Jones. He's running in the Republican primary for North Carolina governor. Mr. Jones, great to have you in the studio for this interview tonight. Great being here. Thank you so much for letting me come in.